Uh, apologies again. When I read it, this is probably going to be bleeped. Um, a collective f- <laughs> echoes across the nation. Japan yeah. versus Ireland. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I felt anyway. Play by play on Sports Joe and Her. Brought to you by AIG. In support of 20 by 20. We are back, episode 23. I don't know how we've made it 23, but we have. A disappointing weekend for Irish rugby fans, and um, some Irish rugby fans. We've also got to talk about Dublin's homecoming and a whopper 105 page report about the FIFA Women's World Cup, talking about the fact that, oh my God, they're actually good at sports. Um, with me on the panel today, we've got producer of House of Rugby, Pat McCary. How's it going? How are you? He's got loads of other mad skills as well, but we're going to have to take a while to get through Mackers, so I've just kind of cut yours a little bit. Is that okay? <laughs> Geography student of the year in 1997. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Neve McAvoy, aka Mackers, aka Semi Slimmed Shady. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Thank I you so forgot much. what you look like. I'm so happy to be here. You look so <laughs> happy to be well, here. I shook it. <laughs> no, nice. I am. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, how was the homecoming yesterday? Yeah, it was too good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We okay, great. Really We're gonna get like two word answers. <laughs> Class. No, no, it was really good. It was really nice. It was really special. In fairness, like time to be involved in in Dublin football and stuff. And there's so many people out. Um, and I don't know if we were just kind of on the lads' coattails, but it was an incredible experience for us. And obviously, we've never experienced anything like that before. This will be our third All Ireland, and it was just so special to be involved. Like there was, I think there was fifteen thousand people there. So obviously, like that was incredible. Um, but yeah, then we celebrated too much and I'm struggling. You sound great. You sound great. Where are you? We, oh, no. we spoke about um, Multiple cans of Coke. Yeah, nice, nice. Diet are. or full fat or just oh, full fat. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> diet stuff's disgusting. Um, and we spoke about, uh, to Lindsay Davey last week about yeah. your prowess um, when it comes to singing. Oh, Did yeah. that happen? Yeah, multiple. Can you hear it in my voice? You can. Yeah, it sounds like... Yeah. I actually couldn't believe it. I, I thought she thought I was very good at singing. I, she was. She said it was no. nothing but superlatives from Lindsay. She was being super sound. I was being a dickhead. I don't think so. I saw it back. I think I was getting some serious grief. I get some serious grief all the time when I'm not here. Uh, it's because you're never here. <laughs> <laughs> so it had to be said. Sorry. But now you're back. So it's all good. And we can talk about three in a row, five in a row, all that amazing stuff. Holy crap. Dublin football is in a pretty good place at the moment. Yeah, we're having serious crack. I think we need to actually stop celebrating at this point. <laughs> no, you see... Maybe I'll... start sleeping at some okay, stage. Yeah, we'll sleep. We're having a rest and then going out and partying again is good. Because, like, I think sometimes with sport, you can kind of take it a bit too seriously and not uh, not celebrate the good stuff. Because yeah. it might happen again. Yeah. Like, obviously. We went to Beginner's Story House yesterday <laughs> um, after... It was so funny. Joan and Dave were there, my parents. Uh, Dave the Rave. Dave the Rave, yeah. And we went to the Guinness Storehouse and I was like, I'm 100% coming home with you guys. Like, when you're leaving, like, make sure I come. And they were like, <laughs> they were like, oh, Neve, bye. And I was like, have a nice holiday. <laughs> Enjoy your holiday. See you next week. Like, but yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just really enjoying it. Like, you know, I in previous years, I would have probably celebrated a bit but this is a whole new level and yeah it's just it's unbelievable we're having an unbelievable time and like it was it hard as well to go from the mode of like celebrating and on a massive high to then being like okay club championship get back in that mindset yeah I, I actually I submitted my thesis the week of the match as well so I was like <laughs> was I've gone hatched on it as a whole new level of celebration <laughs> like <laughs> Um, but yeah, so then we had club championship on the Monday. Um, I don't know if you saw the result. <laughs> Sylvester's we lost by 25 points. <laughs> okay, so it was comprehensive. Yeah, yeah. But um, I was marking one of the girls who's was very dumb as well. And I remember like we were in coppers on the Monday and I was like, I should go home. And then I was like, oh, Lauren's still here. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because... Yeah. We'll be marking each other, but like she's eight years younger than me, so yeah, no, she oh, no. killed me. I was like, oh, stop running everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it is. It's hard as well. Like the lads, they had club championship. It's just such a quick turnaround. Um, last year, the club championship was on the Wednesday, which was like barbaric, you know, in, even in terms of regardless of celebrations, even in terms of like your body being ready. Like if you play a full 60 minute All Ireland final, and then you're expected to go play on, on the Wednesday. Like, it's just not... Like, there's high chance of injury. You never mind the fact that everyone's been out on the gargle for three days. 
Oh. But this year they gave us like um they gave us the so it was like Monday week. So we had like ten days, which is like much better, but yeah, we didn't learn shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah. Multiple. Uh, multiple shenanigans. I hate, like when you leave the nightclub and there's like morning joggers out and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> I just get an egg mac muffin and oh, on my way. The quality of nutrition for yeah, those that are yeah. having a rollover. No, day. but I'm I'm back in straight hour now. Okay, tomorrow. From, yeah, from yeah. tomorrow onwards. Yeah. And how was your? Because like you've had a quick turnaround when it comes to well, a relatively quick turnaround when it comes to county and then club. But Pat, as house of rugby producer as well, you've only got a few days, and then you're obviously making your debut on Play by Play. Oh yeah. So you know. Pretty intense stuff for me as well, yeah. There was uh, just, you know, a lot to kind of get ready for, a lot to kind of prep for, watching, like doing my analysis, watching past episodes as well. Yeah. What was was your favourite past episode, Pat? Oh, the one probably that I was in the studio for about the the lass who was pregnant and kind of got her money taken away from her. Yeah. Okay. Montoya was her name. And uh, yeah, she was, and all the other ones. Actually, I liked um, when, is it Amber Barrett when she was on as well? Yeah. And the. I was there for both of those. Oh. McLaughlin, the Donegal oh, forward as well. Oh, yeah. oh God. There's a bit of a theme here. Yeah, Sorry. I, 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 I actually didn't, didn't think you'd get it, so now I feel kind of a bit guilty, and I apologise <laughs> for calling you out. <laughs> I'm glad that Great. I was able this to remember you. This is going swimmingly so far. <laughs> uh, I actually wanted to say there, Neve, when you were saying about um, <clears throat> the coattails of the men, like, Last yeah. year and the year before, did you ever have joint celebrations? And um, was there ever any, anything like that for the women's no, team before? No, it, it was in fairness, it was quite unique this year um, because the lads drew. So we ended up on the same weekend. Yeah, yeah. But previous years, they would have been playing either two weeks or a week before, which was annoying for me because obviously my boyfriend's involved with the men. So I wasn't able to like kind of go to their banquet and like mm. celebrate him and his endeavours or whatever. Um, but then, well... I went, but I was uh, like, Behaved. didn't want to be there. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I was uh, training the next day and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, of course I wanted to be there. Sorry, I'll take that back. <laughs> but um, no. Yeah. So I was like in bed early and stuff. But then obviously with the lads drawn, their match was the night before ours. So we would have prepared together and stuff. So it was quite unique in the sense that both matches, it was a festival of football, you know, yeah. the kind of way. Yeah. Um, I actually was a bit nervous. I thought that maybe it would take away from our crowds. I thought that we people would be like oh I was there yesterday I don't want to go again or people would be hung over yeah. like but we actually had unbelievable turnout and the weather was so bad um but yeah no it was just a savage weekend we had an unbelievable time um and it was like we all celebrated together obviously it was just like a collision of teams and coffee yeah. just like <laughs> yeah. sorry I don't mean for so this many episode to be about drinking I know this is about <laughs> sport this podcast it's but it's a part of it um no yeah we we had uh unbelievable crack and the lads are so sportive of us uh, like we obviously are very sportive of them we're dubs and whatever but like they're so sportive of us and anytime we would have bumped into them over the weekend like they were talking about the, the about the game they weren't just like congratulations they were like oh like you were playing really well and it was a shame, obviously, our match, the weather was so bad. Like, we, we actually feel a bit weird because we're, like, so happy to have won. But, like, we're a bit disappointed that it was not a great spectacle. Yeah. You know, that kind yeah. of way. Because um, I think, as women in sports, you kind of do feel an onus of responsibility to produce a spectacle because you feel like you're representing. I know I've said this before, but you're re- representing the sport as a whole. So, like, the lads are just representing Dublin, but, like, we're representing Dublin. We're, we're actually representing ladies Gaelic football so like we were a bit disappointed in the sense that the game wasn't what we would have wanted it to be and 2017 and 2018 were good specials but at the end of the day we're like happy enough to dig out the win but <clears throat> I think sometimes I think sometimes in men's sports I know actually I, I was talking to you there earlier about and a tweet that went up about Tomas O'Shea about the rugby lads yeah yeah about um kind of excuses that they didn't perform well um and I think sometimes that happens. It's it's acceptable in, in men's sport to be like, um, you know, the weather was terrible. Like, what would you expect? But it for us, it's more like, oh, women's sports shit. Like, you know, yeah. the kind of way. But I don't think, any, I think that's probably me being a bit of a, uh, like, cynic, you know, the yeah. kind of way. Because I don't think anybody, I think everybody, anyone I've spoken to has been like, oh, the weather was so bad. But we would still have that in our heads that like we would always on the biggest day of the year of the ladies football calendar we'd always like to produce a spectacle for you know, it's, and, and you and you do get like because, because there's, audience, so, like, there's, yeah, there's so yeah. <clears throat> there's so many games of great football throughout the year but there's so few that are actually exactly. shown 
on mainstream TV mm. and that gets that audience. So you do have, you're like, okay, we have a limited amount of time or a limited, <clears throat> uh, like we've limited numbers to like really showcase what it's exactly. all about. Showcase, yeah. And, you know, yeah, sometimes it rains really, really badly. And I like, to be fair, I still thought it was a really entertaining game of football. I said that and then I got abuse on, not abuse, but I got like <laughs> I, I, absolutely ripped on, on Twitter. Twitter. And I was like, oh, for God's sake, like it's just, yeah, it mightn't be like the scoreline of the previous two years or, yeah. but it was still, I still found it like a close, exciting game. It wasn't like, we couldn't see the, the skills that we know both teams have, yeah. but like you could still see like a lot of like technical ability. It came in. down to a dogfight like, and I think like lots of people are very impressed with that Lara McGee. <laughs> she knocked the head off me in club championship, <laughs> but like it really suited her skill set. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like her ability to tackle is incredible and she got some incredible turnovers but it just wasn't a day for the forwards like it was a defensive game it was a day for the backs and um, yeah I just think I think both teams were quite defensive um, on the back I Galway, I think Galway played defensively but I think on the back of that then we became quite defensive so you know obviously you want an all in final to be a shootout but it wasn't that it was just defending like you know kind of ways yeah. like both teams trying not to lose rather than trying to go out to win but Listen, it is what it is. Like someone, <laughs> yeah. You play the course that's in front of you, and yeah. I don't know. So you got another all around back medal in your back pocket. But so. it was funny, yeah, because I was chatting to Sinead Goldrick there last week, and you kind of say to her, oh, "Congratulations on that as well," and she'll be like, "Yeah, you know, it's a weird thing no. to kind of win an All Ireland and yet feel yeah you didn't kind of you know, or it's a shame that no, we're so happy and we're, it's such a privilege to be involved at the minute, and we're so proud of ourselves and all all that kind of thing, but. As as Jen said, like in women's sport, you're always conscious of the showcase, like mm. and trying to give a good account to yourself. And I don't really think either team gave the best account of themselves. Um, in but the but it's also you're also hugely critical of yourself as athletes as yeah. well, especially when the game was only a couple of weeks ago. So I think like for me now, looking back at some games, there's a few games that I'm like, oh, I can't watch them, and they like. Does 20, the Interpros have just gone, is, is it? Not like not even Interpros <laughs> just gone, but like even like other other like games playing with Ireland and stuff, and I'm looking back and it's like we should have won that game. Or even games that we did win. I the only reason I would watch them is like if we've got a game coming up and I need to look at like what I've been doing wrong myself. But if it's the end of a championship and I don't get any, if it doesn't make me better as a player and I know that it was we played crap as a team, I'm I tend to be like Okay, I have to suck it up and watch it, but I don't like. No, I haven't watched it back. I haven't so. watched back, and I the previous two years I would have watched <clears throat> them like yeah, yeah. multiple times just because like it's unreal. You know, winning all Ireland's amazing. It's one of the best films that I've ever experienced, like in my sporting career or life in general. But I yeah, I still haven't watched it back. I don't know what, what it is. Yeah, it's bad. I probably should watch it back because at the end of the day we still won the All Ireland. Yeah, and like we're so happy as you can tell by my <laughs> shook it. <laughs> presence today <laughs> did we are still celebrating it yeah but um yeah i must watch it back it's interesting i was gonna ask watch it back over a few drinks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after yeah i was gonna ask jenny what were your celebrations like because leinster won the interpro didn't they so yeah. how did they come sorry oh thanks, 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 thanks sorry. How, yeah how did they compare like were they um, marty morrissey up on stage or uh no so okay. it was our kickoff was really it was really late on a friday night so seven o'clock kickoff lashing as well wasn't it yeah it yeah. was pretty similar conditions to, to your game um so again it wasn't the nicest of rugby on show um with leinster we tend to like quick mm. um quick ball and spread it wide early and have kind of like you know two kind of flat and wide or flat and deep attacks and just in that kind of game sometimes it's like it's a game for the forwards um, and in our case and they like did a tremendous job and mm. I kind of as a back I was just kind of sitting there watching <laughs> them do all the heavy lifting Um no it was good crack there was some um there was some great was Maniac 2000 one of our really? one of our one of our backs coaches did the best rendition I have ever seen of Maniac 2000 that involved jugs of water and intense side stepping so yeah, it was good. And then like <laughs> a rollover the next day, um, I had to be relatively well behaved because my knee 
it's like still not 100% so I'm kind of like so no tumbles no, no, no tumbles t- yeah. and I'm afraid to hit the dance floor too hard so um, that'll come later on but yeah it was, it was, mm. good, it was good crack like sticking with rugby um, do you guys Just trying to avoid it here for as long as I could yeah no we're going to have to talk about it yeah. a little bit um, I stuck up a, a tweet during the week um, and Eve was like mention that tweet <laughs> um, because it summed it right up um, a collective uh, apologies again when I read it this is probably going to be bleeped um, a collective f- <laughs> echoes across the nation Japan yeah. versus Ireland yeah pretty much that's what I felt anyway take it from here Pat. yeah it was because um, I was saying I was getting all ahead of myself because ahead of the Scotland game I was walking in and said to one of the lads in work I think we're going to get two early tries against them and I think we're going to walk them today oh. and then we did it and I was feeling great so then the night before I said to them we're going to bounce these clowns was the actual <laughs> oh no yeah, it was a good thing it wasn't a no. tweet now it was just a whatsapp message but uh, then he got <clears> back to me the next day he's like how did that go Like, and it was absolutely dreadful nobody would have predicted that and the fact that we were scrambling at the ends and hanging on for dear lives just to get a losing bonus point yeah. was like even if you predicted a shock Japan win you wouldn't have predicted that um, so it's it's weird to kind of watch that game back and rewatch it again and see that we we're so comprehensively beaten and you think this guy's great, he was brilliant, where did this guy come from? But it seems like it came out of nowhere as well. Like we were expected to win that game easily. Like we played them two years ago. It was like half the team that would play them again, and this wasn't even a full strength Ireland team. They beat them fifty two or fifty five twenty. Yeah. And then they beat them by thirty eight, something like that again, like thirty eight twenty in the other game. So um and the fact that we had beaten Scotland so well, everybody thought, um, I don't think we thought we were going to beat them by much, but I thought, it, you know, this was just another step on the way to eventually playing the Springboks in the quarterfinals. And the Japanese players were talking afterwards saying that the Irish media had just been focusing on South Africa in the quarterfinals. Yeah. And we have to hold our hands up. I think everybody was. Um, we'd already been talking about, um, even for House of Rugby shows that were coming up, we're like, oh, what's South Africans can we talk to now? Like, and oh, so like yeah. we weren't speaking it's your about fault, it. Pat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we kind of uh, the voodoo. I think Alan Quinlan was speaking about that kind of saying like the players themselves wouldn't have been thinking that way, but even CJ Stander admitted all the planning that had went in for that for two weeks beforehand, and then they had a short turnaround, and they were just absolutely caught on the hop and well beaten, well beaten. Yeah. Like you go into, when you go into a World Cup, you know who you're facing straight away and you've got a number of weeks, like you don't start thinking about Scotland straight away, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, during that training camp, it's the one that gets mentioned and you're kind of all gearing up towards that. And and then when it finally happens, it's, you go into full recovery mode and then suddenly the Japan game is upon you. Um, So I don't think it's like they underestimated Mm -hmm. or I don't think like for me anyway, you don't underestimate things like when we were playing Japan in our World Cup, like we narrowly beat them. It was not mm. a performance. Now we had a poor, I'll say a shit show of a World Cup anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, being a host nation, it does give you, it does give you a little bit of a lift. And I think we saw that in in this game. But like, and that I'm playing, and and it's not an excuse. Japan played better than us, hands down, pretty much across the park. Yeah. Across the park, they were better than us. Um, even little things like they were, you know, they were down by nine points. You lose a player like Maffi, their number eight, who is like extremely athletic, powerful guy, great in these tight exchanges. He's one of their, you know, star players that you look towards being like, this guy can make something happen. Gets injured in under 30 minutes. And then you've got, you know, their captain of the last number of years, uh, Leach coming yeah, in, yeah. who plays the game very differently, is wider, maybe a little bit more skillful and doesn't use that brute force as much. And Japan can change their game to suit this new back row and it flipped the game. This is why they played so wide. They had some little handling errors and then playing in that weather is is grim. It's yeah. horrible. I just can't like, and they you go to hot, like training camps in, in they went to like Portugal We've we did one once years ago with the sevens team, and it is a dry heat, and you're like, oh my god, everyone's Irish pasty skin is feeling it, and it's tough. But then, yeah, playing in that kind of weather, we played in Hong Kong, and I lost four kg in one day, just from <laughs> it's just it's grim. I get I, like it's so grim, um, and like yeah, you, you just you can't like you need to be playing in that kind of conditions to be used to it. So yeah. I just I'm just gutted for them. It's just a 
of a shitter. Yeah, they, like you can see even today, like this is where Ireland are playing now on Thursday against Russia. They're playing Kobe Stadium and they have a roof on that stadium as well. And it looked like it was sweltering today. All the fans had um, had fans out, really <laughs> enough. But uh, he's. <laughs> delighted with that he's like yeah write that down but, that's uh, one for the clips that's one for the clips but Greg Laidlaw scored a try there for the Scots and he was so shattered after scoring his try he was in the middle of the Samoa pack as they were admonishing each other he was just like this apologising saying sorry fellas like he was too shattered to even get back yeah. so it, I suppose it's a weird thing but that's the other thing about Ireland like they knew this was coming they knew they had six days <clears throat> they knew they were playing the two toughest teams first so I don't know at the time nobody really I think that's what, what normally happens Joe Schmidt names the team everybody trusts Joe Schmidt nobody made much of a fuss about the fact that they hadn't changed the pack and then all of a sudden you look back and now in hindsight they've lost and you're like why didn't we make a few changes here because we even look at lads like uh, like Rory Bess is 37 yeah. played great there last played Saturday the yeah played all uh, 80 minutes and then played another hour and was out on his feet as well like, yeah. and, and James yeah. Ryan I think only 23 years old, but you know, even him at the end of the game was just standing there, walking into people and getting battered back. Like so, uh, I think I think Jack Conan was supposed to play in that game, but he got pulled the day because he'd fractured his foot. So that was one change they're going to make. But I think they should have freshened it up a little bit more, uh, get Tyke Byrne in there, Reese Ruddock. So, um, but it is a funny thing. I remember I used to kind of cover Ireland tours away, and Declan Kidney used to be naming teams, and he'd sit down with him and he'd talk you through each selection, and it made all the sense in the world. And then they might get, go out and get beaten 60 0 by the All Blacks. And you'd be like, whoa, why did he pick him? Like, yeah. why did he call Paddy Wallace off a beach, you know, to play against Nanu or something or Sonny Bill Williams? So at the time, sometimes it makes sense to them at the time, but I don't know. If they had two years, they knew they were going to be playing Scotland and Japan. I think they should have changed the pack around a little bit more, changed the team around a little bit more. I think hindsight is a beautiful thing. And mm. as well, you've got great players like I think somebody like Dan Levy in that kind of game yeah. would be ideal too so it's uh, yeah I don't know I th- like, and I, I mean, there can be you can totally validate why I think he picked a pack like that but just didn't work out rush on Thursday we're still in with the shout and mm. like I, I saw like on Twitter the streams of like what the fuck is Carberry doing kicking it out but I think that was the right thing to do. Like, uh, we weren't getting anywhere. So, basically, Carby yeah. kick out the ball, losing bonus points. Like, we, we, like, if we were in their half, then play the ball. But we were in our own five-metre line. Like, yeah, not an easy thing to do. Um, but I thought it was, yeah, thought it was we, spot on. We spoke about it on, on House of <clears throat> Rugby on Saturday as well. And... Let's say if there's four people talking about it, I was the only one saying, just keep playing. And the lads who were saying, kick it out, we're all rugby players. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, so I'm the fan, maybe kind of, or the, the, the journalist who's kind of looking at it saying, like, just go for it. You know, we're, all, yeah. we're already going to lose. So why not just go for it like that? But the lads have probably been in those situations before. There's, they were almost saying there's nothing to gain. You would have gained one extra point and you still would have drawn. And this is if you put, had pulled off a miracle play from yeah. behind your yeah. own line. So... Um, I don't know, yeah. The sense is just like... <laughs> oh, it's just... And do you, know what's, like, do you know what's crap as well? When you're in that situation, you have the ball, you're losing, and you're kind of like, we have to take it out. It's just... It's like <laughs> not... It's not It's not pleasant. And you can just see... Sometimes you can see players looking around being like, yeah, we have to. And like, yeah, putting boot to ball and something like that is so deflating as well. Do you think after the game, sorry, I know you spoke about the mm. Japanese were saying about the Irish media, thinking about the Springboks and stuff, but do you think after the game there was enough of a critical analysis or do you think, I know I saw I spoke about Tom, Tommaso O'Shea's yeah, yeah. tweet and he put up a tweet saying that um, there was kind of excuses being given and they weren't being like kind of called out for not having played well you know the mm. kind of way because obviously in, in the GA world it's like it's nearly the whole other end it's like way back it's like wrong how critically negative yeah and yeah and sometimes in and it happens sometimes in, in women's sport I don't think that there's enough critical analysis like if I don't play well like say it in the analysis I'm not going to be hurt by it well like I text I want. you when you don't play well <laughs> yeah. I'm no. just like Macker you were yeah crap. yeah like and I I think I didn't watch the match yet back yet but I think like after our all in final it probably should have been said that it wasn't a great game you know mm. the kind of way but I don't know like and Tommaso Shea got kind of berated on Twitter then have, for saying yeah. that there wasn't enough critical analysis 
and it was kind of like, oh, well, you should be behind the lads and all. And he's like, that's not what I'm saying. Like, of course I support Ireland. Like, you know what I mean? I'm totally up for the lads. And everyone was saying, why didn't you tweet last week when they went, won and stuff? And, and I, But I do think he had a valid, valid argument. Like, do you think... Like, yeah. I know you guys were speaking about the weather and the heat and obviously, absolutely, that was a factor. But, like, at the end of the day, like, the lads didn't play well. Like, it's, you know, that it, kind of way. It is funny, yeah, because even... Um, Let's say I would have done player ratings after it and I gave a lot of fives and sixes. Whereas in the past of Ireland of Lost, I have given fours, I have given threes as yeah. well. Or, but there, was, yeah, to, there wasn't any player who played really, really poorly. Like Rory Best lost a couple of crucial lineouts. But like, for me, a lot of them just played average or below par. And that's what they lost because they were playing against a team who played yeah. great. Okay. So it's a weird one. It's a collective one. But then also with rugby sometimes as well. It's like you, when you rewatch the game, then you really start seeing what fell apart as well. But yeah. there was a sense, I remember watching, like I, we were, I was watching the RTE coverage and there seemed to be a bit of like, they were in shock almost that that mm -hmm. has happened. Like and Ferris and Jamie Heaslip and Eddie O'Sullivan were just trying to, it's almost like no matter what they had, you know, game planned in their own head, they never thought they were going to lose that game. So everybody was just, what happens, it's, you know? It's funny because... Um, don't, like in, sorry, don't you nearly have to convince yourself like when people are saying to you we play Cork in the um, All-Ireland semi-final and obviously there's a massive rivalry there mm. like it's we've produced some like epic games the two teams or whatever and people are saying to me yeah that was the All-Ireland final and I'm like are you joking like Galway beat us all the time like they, yeah. they've beaten us in the league the last two years you know and, and but like you could easily buy into that like mm. And I could easily have been like, ah, yeah, like, you know, we could, but like, we actually had to convince ourselves, like, that, no, not even convince ourselves, because we know, but like, just remind ourselves that like, Galway are an excellent team, like, and it doesn't matter that the outsider saying, you know, that was the all in final, because I'm like, no, it obviously was only the semi-final. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, it's yeah, still yeah. a very tough game. Like, it's and not going like... to count for anything if we yeah. don't win the final against an equally as good team. Um, but I wonder how much I, I'm interested I'd be interested to know like did any of the Irish lads like have in their head the swing box you know like you were saying that yeah. the, like you're, you like, you'd like to think that no like they're totally shut off and that and all but like how much are they preparing for the spring box in their head and not yeah. Japan like well Jenny, Jenny you like, might even know a bit more about this but like family will be making plans to get out there for the knockout yeah. stages and because Ireland they're even still, I think today Opta did a sting where it said there's still 91% chance to get there because they should beat Russia and Samoa. So family would be making plans. So family would be going, what quarterfinal do you think you're getting to? You know, that type of yeah. stuff, like you have to arrange flights. Yeah, but then I think that if, that's especially that's, especially that's your, annoying, yeah, except, yeah. especially with your close family, I know for me anyway, with like, if it, if it hinges on this result needs to go this way for us to end up here, they know not to be talking to me about flights yeah. or anything like that because like that's not my concern yeah. I do not care if you come to the game I do not care about your tickets I want to win the game Yeah. and then all that extra stuff I'll see you after the game and I'm delighted great but if you're not there like yeah but I want the win first Yeah. yeah. so I don't I think that that's kind of very much like and then as well, it's Japan. So, so many of these guys have families and stuff. It would be difficult for them to travel out too. I think that the the like it, it can be easy maybe for like people on the high bench to start thinking ahead of themselves but if you're in that match day squad it's it's all about Japan and that's what you're watching that's all the video analysis you're looking at the your opposite number being like is he left footed does he like to kick on third or fourth phase you know how does he go into a rook do I need to keep an eye on this and it's not like ooh what is Russia or what is the Samoan guy going to do or even like there's they still had three games. You yeah, don't, you yeah. know, it was much, it was way too far in advance. Like maybe if it was the Samoa game and they were looking into, you know, the, the knockout stages, then I could understand it a little bit. But it's the second game of the pool stages. Like they're not thinking about Springboks. Yeah. They're not thinking yeah. about the all Blacks. I would say they had, maybe they did think that, like the minute they beat Scotland 27-3, they knew that they're pretty much sorted for the knockout stages as well, though, because they they're gonna be. There is a collective relief. Yeah, that was yeah. the big. That was the Russia. one that like even us as fans were guilty of, of being like, right, once we get over this skin, hurdle, yeah. it's happy days. Um, but like Japan just played class. They were outstanding. They played yeah. really smart rugby. They did kind of the opposite of what Wales did against Australia yesterday. So straight from kickoff, Wales kicked off and they counterrupt like so aggressively and with such intent and 
Australia didn't send people into the breakdown. So there was a huge amount of turnovers. And then in the second half, Australia realised, oh, we need to send men into the breakdown. Mm -hmm. And it nullified and they started creeping back. Japan did the complete opposite. That's where Ireland are strong. They're, you know, they're very accurate in, in breakdown and, and they're able to send men in and they're, and they're big, strong carriers. So Japan made their big two-man tackles and then fanned out and that meant that the defence didn't tighten up and they were able to put huge pressure. Like even in the dying minutes of the game, there was a little trick play, ball to Henderson and Henderson popped it back to Carberry. And the defence were still so sharp, they completely ignored those kind of like that dummy line of yeah. attack and flattened Carberry. And that was a huge moment for them as well. So anyway, I could talk about it all they day. Did ha yeah, they, they had their homework <laughs> done, didn't they? Completely, yeah. And... Um, yeah, they they kind of did a number on us as well, and kind of yeah, they attacked their strengths as well, I suppose, which is a big thing. Do you think that's to be said for home advantage, like the home nation mm. in a World Cup? Surely, like that's yeah, such a buzz. Like it is. Like I always remember, uh, remember the two thousand two football World Cup and Korea were were one of the yeah, teams. Yeah. as well. And you're like, no way, Korea getting to the knockout stages, and they get to the quarters, didn't they? They as got well? to like, like they played Spain, against Turkey Italy. or something in the yeah. third. Like yeah, they got really far. And like so, it's just like it, I don't know. There's a bit of you kind of think are they getting the the home decisions but then they they can also they can have everything going in their favour like even like they were the first team out they're going to be the last team to play in the pool they're going to be the, they'll know exactly what they have to do because they play Scotland in the last game yeah. they have the longer turnarounds between games and they can pick the venues where they want to play so they might think remember again going back to a football World Cup when Ireland had to play Mexico down in Orlando you're like who organised this <laughs> like Steve Staunton with the cap on him like you know so it's the same thing, Ireland all of a sudden playing in these real humid conditions as well and earlier in the day. So, yeah, but I suppose that is the thing of being the host nation, just tilt the, the board in your favour as well. Anyway, I think we Like we've... you guys did in, in the Women's World Cup. That is oh, harsh, that is pop. mean, but yeah. fair enough. <laughs> um, and you're never coming back on this show again. Class. It's well, a one-time only appearance. Moving yeah. swiftly along, I'm unsubscribing from House of Ruby <laughs> as well. So thanks for that, Pat. Um, Doha. Um, so Jamaica's Shelly Ann Fraser Price, double barrel, double barrel. Okay. Uh, she created history by becoming the first woman to win four world titles in the 100 meters on Sunday night. Um, that is not too bad because she was she took a two year hiatus from the championship. She was giving birth to her son, um, and he got badass. to witness the yeah. win. That's pretty badass. I suppose badass. we have to touch on that as well because it's very very impressive. Um, it's a great hair. I saw that there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did you see her vibrant blue hair. It was a great <laughs> yeah. look. I once dyed my hair blue. Um, oh, really? <laughs> it went to a grey granny rinse. It didn't work. I didn't do it properly. And I accidentally stained my friend's mom's sink. Anyway, side note. <laughs> <laughs> Moving Thank swiftly you. along. Yeah, yeah. Tell me more about it. Where did you get the blue dye from? Oh, some dodgy shop in Dublin. <laughs> like, I thought it was a good idea. We were on like some school tour up to see something cultural and I brought blue hair dye <laughs> yeah uh, it worked out great and like my mom didn't even she just kind of looked at me shook her head and was like standard Squiddle. yeah um, even my gran was just like you've got my colour hair so it was an actual <laughs> granny rinse um, okay so we'll still stick with Doha for a little bit did you guys see any of the highlights or anything of the championship because it, it, it's, it's weird it's not on terrestrial it's TV as well isn't it so yeah. empty yeah, the, stadiums the stadiums are it's so frustrating because you've got Athletes, you know, in their prime, having trained for this, and then you pick a city that has no, it well, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have an interest in athletics. No yeah. one's at the stadiums. It's there's way more empty seats than there is people like with bums in there. Um, yeah, it's just disappointing. You've got like people with specifically people with bums. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> just talking about people with bums. Bums only, please. Yeah. Thank you. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, I deserved a call out for that. <laughs> um, so still speaking of bums, um, you Chef are. Cole. Yeah. 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 He's a bum. He's got elected again for another four years. No IWF, way. Yeah. And then he organised this. Well, he was the driving force behind it. And there's around. I've seen some crowd shots, like eight people in the background and hundred women, hundred meter women's final. Like that's useless, you know. Well, yeah, having eight people. Um, at a stadium I'm sure it's a bit more than eight but still that was like you know to add emphasis to it is pretty bad yeah speaking of attendance though we're trying to go for a record breaker here um, so ahead of the European qualifiers Ireland are taking on Ukraine um, October 8th mm. um, 
we need bums there. We're going to continue with this. <laughs> so yeah, bum campaign. Get bums <laughs> to the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's going to be an absolute cracker. Ukraine are seated second in the group, mm-hmm. so this is like huge for us. And then we also get to see, you know, their new coach in action, uh, Dutch um, woman Poe. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Vera Powell, yeah. Yeah. I'm just say it with confidence. She probably goes yeah, yeah. to the show and she's going to be like, oh, damn, that Jenny Murphy <laughs> one. Yeah. Jan. 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 Yeah. Maybe we have to be kind of say. Sorry, it's a reference to that. Jenny did something recently and your man didn't even know what her name was. It was great. <laughs> Never mind Jan. Like any of her sporting athletes. Yeah, I had to, as he kept on saying, oh, well done, Jan. I had to just nod my head politely and be like, oh, it's too much effort to correct you. And... Yeah. I'm just going to suck it up for now, even though I probably should have called him out in it, but however. Okay, well, sticking kind of with the soccer mm-hmm. theme, FIFA Sorry. have released a report, a 105-page report, um, of which I've kind of skimmed through. So Joanne O'Reardon has written a really good piece in the Irish Times about it, so if you if you want to find out a little bit more, um, check that out. But she spoke about, you know, that this World Cup, well, it's in the report, is it's most technical, most skillful and most dramatic we've seen. Now, we're only measuring it against eight or nine World Cups have been taking place. I'm going to say yeah. nine. Um, <clears throat> but, like, it wasn't just attendance that was up. It wasn't just media coverage was up. The actual skill level. So, we've, like, got, a, like, a few little things I've written down. Um, nice. So, goalkeeper saves, um, up by 5%. Like, they've, ah. gone, they've gone a lot of detail into it. Um, also, like, headers have risen as well. So there's 27 header, headers scored from crosses. So like even you can take little things from that, like players were using the uh, wider channels yeah. more effectively and getting their head in the ball, things like that. Um, and then only 9% of the passes were played long. Everything else was kind of short, direct. Oh, so they're yeah. more patient with the ball as well. And it was a very exciting World Cup. Because um, I know you spoke a little bit about, you know, obviously people bemoaning they, they get one opportunity to see a women's game and immediately that's branded yeah. as like, oh, they're all like this. You know, if you go into a USA Thailand game and it's 13-0, that's, that's not what women's football is it capable is, yeah. of. Yeah. Um, so there were like, some things were like, it's not fast enough, it's boring, it's not technically good enough, but basically this report is like, you're lying. Mm-hmm. Screw you guys. <laughs> we have it all here. So yeah. whatever. Yeah, there was an increased number of assholes given out about it. But like, yeah, yeah it's it was, all in this report. So. It was, um, yeah, there was, I remember at the start, before the tournament started, Stephanie Roach was kind of almost warning people for the first few games, there's going to be a few trashings <laughs> going out there. Like, But uh, yeah, once you got to the, the knockout stage, it was brilliant. Yeah. Um, the amount of games, maybe it was just the time it was on, the amount of games you just would tune in to, and you'd go, oh, give this 10 minutes and you'd end up watching the whole thing. It was great. I thought, like, uh, I loved a couple of players in it. Uh, Amandine uh, yeah. Henri was brilliant. And then Rose Lavelle was brilliant as well. And, uh, yeah, just to see them, they were passing around. And then my wife, I was saying, when we first got together, she pretended she liked sport. And we were going out with each other. And then we got married, and she's like, Classic. I don't give a crap about what you're doing. I, I came out, I remember... She we, catfished you! <laughs> she catfished me. Yeah, there was one where, uh, I mean, my sexton got the drop goal against France. Yeah. I was still buzzing two days later, and I came home. Like you probably know what happened. She was like, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Like, but she even there sat down and watched a lot of the women's World Cup games yeah. and, and thought it was great as well. And um, and it was great. And now my daughter's like she's uh, five now, so she's getting a bit of an interest in it. And um, so yeah, t- she would just sit down and watch games as well. So um, yeah, it was great. And then like yeah, just so many games just stuck at the technical level was great. And I, the thing actually, my wife kind of pointed out was like, do you see? Do you notice a difference in these games when you're watching them? And I couldn't figure it out until she said, she goes, no one is diving around the place, you know? And yeah. I was like, yeah, you're right. They just kind of got on. If there's a foul, they'd get on with it. And um, yeah, Jesus, that, that was the thing. For me, going into it, thinking you'd watch it's, maybe the final or semi, I ended up watching around 15 or 16 of the games. Yeah, it's funny, that that comment there. And I, was, I watched the whole World Cup with Dean, like my boyfriend, and he would have been saying, I oh, know, but that's like, they're too honest. Like, that's naive of the girls and all. Oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. How could it be too honest? Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, why? Because they're not like feigning injury all the time. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, naive. She should have bought that and all. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> you're a cynic. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I know. I I thought it was incredible World Cup, but I think the stuff you were talking about, like the kind of tweets going out saying this, that, and the other, like people need to remember, like they're similar sports, men's soccer and women's soccer, but they're different. Like, mm. you know what I mean? It's a different. Like it produces 
a diff it's a different product. Like the rules aren't the exact same. You know, it's the same with ladies' GAA, like and men's GAA. They're not the same thing. Like we are obviously very different to men. Like we don't produce. It's like I, I think I spoke about this before. Like it's not as physical. So we get like really clean dispossessions. You know what I mean? Whereas the lads kind of like can dive in like heavily and stuff. You know what I mean? So like because the rails are slightly different, the game's going to be slightly different because obviously we're capable of different things. Like it's a different product, you know, the kind of way. And I think people are t like, I think that in the World Cup, like there was kind of too much comparison to the men's mm. game. And I'm like, it's not, it's a different sport. Like, even though I know obviously it's not a different sport in the sense like, but, yeah, but you, you, you work with what you have, like as in we are not going to be stronger and we are not going to be faster, yeah. but technically we can still do a lot of yeah. different like things. Yeah, like yeah. Even even <clears throat> when it comes to rugby, uh, like a, a certain style of play that will work really well for men's team, like that abrasive, maybe if you like, you know, big strong carries, you know, link plays and latches and stuff. It's it's not as effective in the women's game for well it's not as effective yeah. for the Irish women's team anyway like if you take that model and copy and paste it onto a women's team like it could be perfect for your men's team and work exactly and you know fit the mold but it's not like this works here let's just stick it on yeah. this yeah. um like our, it's not... our stats man um worked in the men's game for years for GA or whatever and we have a third more tackles than any man's team he ever like women's GA there's like more tackles in it because yeah. we can't just nail someone like and maybe it is a situation where we kind of run the ball a bit more and so there's opportunities to tackle but yeah so I think it's kind of that kind of comparison to the men's game in say the World Cup and stuff it can be quite negative like because people need to remember it's not the same like you know what I mean it's not the yeah. same sport like things are going to be different because Sure, the girls pop up out of tackles, they don't roll around, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's one like, example. If you're going like, to complain about it, just change the channel. Okay. Like, you don't care if you're watching it or not. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, like, it's like, kind of like, up. fine. Like, yeah. If you don't nothing like. Nothing nice to say, like, don't fucking go say home. it at all. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Rant. <laughs> don't, yeah. Um, so, okay, so what else have we got to cover? Well, we, we've talked about women's coming up, back in the girls in green. That's going to be an absolute. Yeah. Of a game that my, um, my niece is going to be at that game she's going to be a mascot at it oh, yeah. so nice yeah so um, she's going to like, so all the family will go I think we'll all go along to that as well and I'm from Tala as well so it's in Tala Stadium so my folks live right across the road from there so we'll just you've got at least 10 bums in, in 10 seats there then yeah <laughs> I think there was um, like a record attendance at the last um, women's game oh, I actually don't know if it was a record sorry but it was definitely an increased attendance yeah they opened up another um Stand. Another stand. But I think that was on the back of the World Cup. Yep. I know Ireland weren't in it, but I think the interest was had peaked like because yeah. but like people were watching the game, they really enjoyed it and they were like, Jesus, I may get out and support Ireland. Like, do you know what I mean? I do I definitely think I know Ireland weren't in it, but I definitely think that the media coverage like of the Women's World Cup contributed to the attendance for the last Irish game. Which and is you amazing. Get see, like, you get to see like quality, you know, Champions League level players yeah, for free. 100%, um, yeah, 100%. And it's, you know, handy to get to. So again, it's Tuesday, October 8th, Tallis Stadium, 7.30 kickoff, European qualifiers. So, Macker, what's, uh, what's ahead for you then? Well, immediately tonight, I'm going to get a pizza. <laughs> what's your topic <laughs> of choice? To um, oh, pineapple and ham. Yes. Pineapple? Yeah, like I'd have it. <laughs> But I'd go pepperoni first. Okay, but oh. pineapple is still fine. Okay, yeah, I, lo I love a bit of yeah. pineapple. Yeah, yeah. so like tonight I'm going to get out for the feed up. I'm actually buzzing for like a 12 hour sleep. Nice. And a pizza. And my results are coming out next week for my thesis and my okay. master's. So I'm buzzing for that as well. That's a solid, I have nothing solid, actually. solid night in. Oh, yeah. Pat, what about uh, you can talk about pizza or what's ahead <laughs> for House of Rugby? Um, yeah, we, what is it? we've got, we're back in on uh, Thursday. So we've got a full show with Jerry Flannery, Andrew Trimble and Barry Murphy oh, are all yeah. in. Jelly. And we're going to play Russia and hope to God we beat Ethan. Russia. Yeah. No, and if we don't beat don't Russia... Don't be putting any jinxes on yeah. this time, Pat. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Don't be talking about bouncing clowns or anything. No. Um, but yeah, if we, if we get beaten by Russia, I, I promise that we'll give them... You know, we'll be very critical and we'll just we'll <laughs> we'll personally be, call we'll out be players. Super mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like Need yeah. Max said, your <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. The Need Max stamp of disapproval. Yeah. <laughs> your shit. Yeah. <laughs> Lads, thanks a million for joining us for episode twenty three. Mm hmm wow. Still kind of like, yeah. That's amazing. We made it to episode twenty three. It's good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Anyway, um that's all for this week. 
Thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm Jenny Murphy and this is Play by Play. Play.